I'm Russ Kunkel, and because I played drums with some amazing artists in my career, like James Taylor, Jackson Brown, Carole King, Bob Seger, Linda Ronstadt, Bob Dylan, and I'm not naming names, Joni Mitchell, Jimmy Buffett, Willie Nelson, B.B. King, and Lyle Lovett, the producers think I should host this show. Well, I'll prove them wrong. This is Between the Grooves, a different take on the interview. All I know about this show is what I don't want it to be. No desk, no red carpet, and no behind the scenes. I'll spend time with some of my friends and colleagues, hopefully revealing things you might not know about them. Today we'll take a trip with my dear friend, legendary bass player Leland Sklar. Leland has played and recorded with everybody. He seems to always be in the studio or touring. We were on tour with Lyle Lovett last summer, had a great time, and when that tour ended, he went right back out to start Phil Collins' European tour. This guy works a lot. Let's get going to Pasadena and pick him up. Okay, let's hope Mr. Sklar's home. Wow, look at this place. <laughs> Leland, oh. how are you, buddy? Give me a hug. Good to see you. Oh, oh man, thanks so much for being able to do this with us today. My pleasure. We're going to have fun. Right Let's go. So, Lee, we have some surprises in store for you today. This should be a, a fun day. I'm, I'm you know, I'm Bring spending the, a day with we you. We have your bass in the back. You got your amp, right? Yeah, I brought my stuff with me. You know, why would I be with you if I don't have my equipment? We have some history in this town, don't we? Yeah. One of my fondest memories, though, is a jar of jalapenos in the oh, refrigerator. Oh, God. And I don't know why Lee did this. I, I don't know if it was a dare or he was just feeling spunky. He ate the whole jar I love jalapenos. jalapenos. I mean, not one or two. There was a jar about this big, and he ate all of them. But like the, in one sitting. But the godfather then, of all jalapenos was in that jar. And he, I mean, it hurt him. It hurt him bad. It hurt him bad pretty quickly. So it was a good thing that that restroom was clean because he used that motherfucker. Oh, man. I, I, I thought my heart was stopping. Joe Lala used to always come in and play percussion come with us, and he had that parrot that right. was always on his shoulder, and he right. never seemed to notice the river of shit running down his back <laughs> from this parrot. And he'd always go, what's that smell? And it would be Joe standing there thinking he was a pirate or something with this parrot, but he had this white, like, stalactite hanging off the back of his shoulder blade of this, you know, pile of crap from this parrot. It was a nice parrot. I mean, it wasn't the parrot's fault that it didn't have a diaper or something. Thanks for letting us come down and uh, barge in on you Pleasure. today. It's a lot of fun. Come on in. Lee, when did you start doing metal sculpture? In 60, 67. Yeah. At, uh, and that was in college? In college. I, I tried. I was a good graphic artist, good painter. But I really didn't find myself till I went three-dimensional. You know what that is? Oh, it looks like a record cutter. This is piece pretty of amazing. The machinery is the best. Now talking about this is kind of low-tech technology as well as all the stuff that we got around here. But now you had a knob put on your base that was um, specifically for what purpose? Um, I would sit in the studio listening to producers suggest making things more mauve, maybe more sparkly. More beige. Yeah, just some sort of nebulous bullshit that they would come up with. So I found it much easier to um, install a toggle switch on my bass that had no wires or anything going to it. I called it my producer switch. And actually, Bass Player Magazine, every April, runs funny ads. If you don't know it, they're joke ads in there. And um, we ran it one year, and they said they had so many inquiries for, for my for the Leland Sklar bass uh, producer switch. Basically, if the guy asked for things, he would just flip the switch and then play, and they'd go like that. We were doing a show, a TV show at Universal Studios, and the barriers, the sound barriers that we would sit behind are pretty much where you just see the guy's heads. Right. So the conductor was sitting over there, and he's going, "I'd like to." Tommy, do you have, let me hear mandolin on this, so Tommy, I'm sitting right next to him, so he bends over and he sits up and he starts playing mandolin. Guy goes, no, that's not it, do you have a bazooki? He went through like 10 instruments before he finally heard what he wanted to hear. 
I'm sitting here crying next to me because Tommy only had his acoustic guitar with him. He just kept bending over and sitting back up again and just changing positions when he played. But I looked at him afterwards and I said, in all my years of, of training, I've just learned more in five minutes with you about how all this works than all of my high school, college experience was. That was the most amazing experience. But Tommy was gifted enough where every time he sat up, it sounded like a different sure. instrument. Lunch, lunch. Be here. Here. <laughs> Donovan, essence to essence. Oh, God. <laughs> now, this is going to bring back some good stuff. I remember that we flew to England. Stevie Wonder had been injured in an accident. He was supposed to headline a concert. It was Jeff Beck and, and Lou Reed and a whole bunch of people on, on this bill. So James got called to come and do, to, to replace um, Stevie. The gig itself was um, was difficult from the standpoint. It was really more a Lou Reed crowd. The audience didn't really get it. They hated us. And it sounded like the end of laughing when we finished our set. You kind of heard one person going like that. And then Craig walked out and took a bow. Well, we all, but the only, but, and then after that, we came on with James with our tails between our legs. And my fondest memory of that was as soon as James sang, I've seen fire and I've seen rain, there was a hellacious lightning hit and it started pouring and Eric Barrett, who was doing lights for us, stood up and bowed at the lighting <laughs> board like he called this thing. Afterwards, we went to this place called the Speakeasy, which was a, uh, a uh, kind of uh, a private club in London. And I just remember through, because it was such a weird gig and uncomfortable, me who never drinks got really drunk. It's and a rarity. It was, it was a terrible rarity, and I remember being dragged out of the women's bathroom. The next day, we, were, we were, had been hired to start doing an album with Donovan called Essence to Essence. And we showed up in the studio, and I just remember Danny, they had a hemorrhoid thing going on where he couldn't sit a session. Craig, who is a total meat and potatoes guy, Donovan's in there with his vegetarian Indian chef, and Craig's going, I can't eat this crap. And I'm completely hung over, and, and I remember the first song we played, waking up halfway through the song, because I had fallen asleep during it, and it was, it was hot in the studio, and I was like, just dying in there. You can remember all this. Well, the but good you're the one that didn't take any. I did, never did. did drugs or drank, so I'm like, uh, I'm on the one hand, I'm the guy everybody comes to for stories, and I'm the guy everybody dreads for stories, because I remember it all. And you're in a position, you can tell them anything you want. I don't care about anything anymore. <laughs> I'll just, you know, I, I've <laughs> lost stuff. Uh, you're the only friend I've got left, I think, and that'll probably be over by the time we're through with this. So, you know, what, what, what have I got to lose? Boy, is this our old haunt down here. And remember just when we used to uh, be right on this corner here and, and, and pick up tricks? Oh, man, yeah. You used to put out like nobodies. I was a little coyer than you, but you were, you were a rabbit. We're going to set you up with your base on the corner over there and put a cup out. <laughs> Don't put a cup, put a jock strap. Remember this, Hollywood Sound oh, Recorders? Jesus. Remember the sessions this, you used to do in there? The first session I ever did professionally was here. Del Shannon was producing Brian Hyland. We did that together? We did that together. Right there. This is the first real studio I was ever hired to come into. Certainly, I think one of my favorite moments was we played Nebworth in 90. It's this festival that's outside of London at the Nebworth Estate. And it was one of these dream things. You walk in there, there's McCartney in playing, mm -hmm. Elton's playing, Clapton, Page and Plant, Pink Floyd, Genesis, Phil. We did a comedy. A it's like this whole lineup, and you're kind of walking through just going, holy crap, this is like my entire life passing before my eyes. And so I walk into the canteen and there's Paul and Linda sitting there eating and I go walk, I, I think to myself, if I don't crawl through ground glass and go up to this guy and suck up to him now, I'm going to hate myself you forever. Do? So I go walking towards the table and Paul looks up and he goes, God, Lee Sklar, I always wanted to meet you. And I almost crap. How does that make you? But the thing that blew my mind was that I, I so we hung out and talked for a while and after his set was through, um, he came off and I said, God, this is so weird because I said the last time I heard some of these songs, I was an usher at the Hollywood Bowl when the Beatles played there. And so, like to have gone this full circle from like the mid-60s of worshiping these guys to suddenly hanging out backstage with him. If I walk in a room and Jimmy Page is there, or Robert Plant or Eric Clapton, to have those guys go, hey Lee, how you doing? To know these guys 
because I'm still standing they, there like they Ralph. They know me, and I'm standing there like Ralph Cramden going. <laughs> I'm still in awe of all these guys. Lee, that's my favorite bass that you have. I mean, you have a lot of great basses. I like the multicolored ones; they're great. But that is really a great bass because of all the signatures on it. You have everybody on there. All kinds. Do, did I ever sign that? Yes, you did. I believe you are. What did I? I you what, are, can you read what I said? I think you said something. Uh, without me, you're nothing. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know that's not true. Yeah. Hey, listen, you want to jam a little bit? Sure, I'd love to. Two, one, two, three, four. Thanks a lot for doing this with us. Russell. I hope you had fun. This is my favorite thing. Reach across those drums and shake your hand. I love you, man. Yeah, I love you too. All right. I really think you and I should just go somewhere. I think we have sex. Okay. okay. And then and then put our picture up here. Okay. See ya. Bye. Bye.